on their knees and my final story, because it will have, a, have a, a message probably that we're all concerned about. In 1972, I got to Wellington. I uh, came from the Manuka up the coast, and everybody thought, well, she's had the Manuka, you know, it's different in the cities. As soon as we think something's different, because, because of where you live. People are people wherever you go. They all bleed, they all want to feed, they all like to be loved, you know, the commonalities, let's focus on that. I came in 1972, almost immediately, I got a call to go to a part of Wellington that shall remain a secret. The minister got in touch with Mary Affairs, is where I was working at the time, and said, there's this uh, mother up there with three hemophiliac children, um, and she's blockaded a house. And they were four by twos over the doors, and we know won't let anybody in. Uh, and so the minister said the police had been in touch with him and to let him know that uh, they were going in at four o'clock to break into the home. Is there anything that can be done? Well, like anything to be done there in Mary Affairs, even if we didn't know what we were doing half the time, but we got the job. So up I go t and get to this place at 10 o'clock and went, lovely day, knock on the door, and I got a volume of abuse that I've never experienced before or since from a very angry woman um, and told me to, you know, what to do. And I said, open your door, I've come to say hello. So I sat outside in the sunshine and, and thought, oh, the hell this is all about. Um, about half an hour later, I, she came and said, I told you to, you know, F off. I said, hey, you don't even offer me a cup of tea. I thought, well, that's one thing. Mary's always give everybody a cup of tea, even if they don't like them. And I, <laughs> you haven't even offered me a cup of tea. No, get in my blah, blah, blah. So I sat there for another half an hour, and then she came back, and, and she said, I told you. This went on from 10 o'clock to 2. I even tried to ask if I could use her toilet. You know, I've tried everything to get in. In the finish at 2 o'clock, I said, listen here, dear. The police are coming at 10 o'clock to break into your house and to knock all this barricade down. Open your door. Come on. I don't want the police to come. I'm sure you don't. Okay. Next minute, the hammer, bang. She reaches in, pulls me in. She said, you've got F in two minutes to tell me what you want, then F off. And I said to her, I want to tell you about this because it's a, in that house with three spring beds, no mattresses, grey blankets, three kids lying on them, all hemophiliacs. It was half a loaf of bread. It was awful, awful, awful. And this woman, how she never got suicidal, I don't know. But, and I said to her, why are you so angry? She said, you, you're the eighth um, one that's been here. I've had the doctor and I've had the nurse and I've had the school teacher and I've had the police and I've had the health and she was screaming at me and she said and now you're here, well there I take my children I'll take my children and get the moral of my story is how many of us are going into one family, all of us with our particular skills all of us to fix what is wrong there paying big money, all of us, when you add up eight services that have all been up there, up the road, when the car's provided by the government and the salary provided by the government, to knock this woman into the ground. I've never forgotten it. Never. Ever. And that was when I decided that there needs to be something done about the people who go into the homes. You see, so often, folks, where, where we've got services, so we're, co we're, we're focused on our service and what we're providing and how wonderful we're doing it and what we need to do it, etc., etc., etc. So the money that's going into bricks and mortar and salaries, someone said to me, are you saying that we should get out of a professional um, input? I said, I'm not saying that at all. You're saying it. What I'm saying is we've got to look at a different way of using the skills and providing the service. So that is not just about the edification of the service. And I'm talking about kohanga. I don't exclude any organization that does its best, but we do it on behalf of, we don't do it with. That's all I'm saying. And if we want to grow um, families to have a, to have what I started off by saying, having purpose, having dignity, having the right to nurture their families, if they don't know how, do we enable them to know how? And that's the kind of skill, as I was saying, it's one thing to say get into those homes. It's another thing because very few people know to how to get through the door without going in there to fix what is going wrong in there. So that's my story. You, you know it all. You're talking about it. Uh, I think the time has come in this country for all of us because we're all putting a lot of energy. Like I said, there's a lot of gunpowder in here.
And if we can strike the right match, we can blow the systems and the things that ain't working out and put in place those things that grow the people who make a country. And those are the families, not the government, not government agencies, not organizations, but the families. And they have a right to be able to grow themselves. Amazing what skills lie inside those families. As I know, I saw the skills that lay inside gang members and how they turned themselves around. On that note, that's it. You haven't heard anything different, but I will say we need to work out how to do things differently in respect of the families in whose interest we're all sitting here and we've all been working year in, year out. I have a, you know, I'm a great person. I believe in, uh, in the potential of, of, of anything. I mean, if you don't focus on positives, you're going to be down digging bigger holes for yourselves every day. So, a lot of energy, Willie, and you've got the mouth that can make it happen. <laughs> you've got the means to make it happen. I'm not saying, Will, we don't need the money. Of course we do. But I'm saying, let's get the money for a different approach rather than just to do what we did yesterday, which ain't worked. Millions of dollars in health, millions of dollars in this, millions of dollars that. We're more sick than we've ever been. Kia ora. Hi, somebody. Oh. Affairs, and Eddie and I had different views about things, and every time I walked into a meeting, you would roll your eyes and say, oh, that dreadful man again. Uh, but uh, over years, we've come to understand one another, and so I insisted that I present this oh, gift you. to you, um, and it's really, I didn't pay for it, by the way, <laughs> but it's really a way of saying... I know that my uh, ignorance was only outweighed by my arrogance in those days. I've changed. I know. I'm no longer uh, ignorant, but I'm still arrogant. <laughs> we need to be. Uh, yes, and this is in, in a part reparation uh, for my, <laughs> for my uh, bad behaviour over the years to, and, and an effort toward reconciliation. Thank you, dear. <laughs> However... Given that I've been a widow for a long time, I'd have been happy for you to present me with a man. 